In general, what was the experience of creating that album, Make Yourself Like, for you? We were just kids, just happy to be where we were and doing what we were doing. So we all had good work ethics. So we're, you know, we're, we're constantly, constantly working, constantly in the rehearsal studio. And when we came home thinking about, okay, what can we do tomorrow? And we come back. And for me personally, the first half of it was me taking like kind of generic sounds and showing the guys, Hey, I could do this in this section. And they were like, all right, cool. So I was like, well, I need to get my records first. It might take two to mm-hmm. two to three weeks for me to get some records. They were like, all right, no problem. Like, Jose, just play a drum beat for 16 bars. We'll let Kill do whatever he wants to do that. That's cool. Uh, I was like, what? <laughs> so like that whole record was, was like a lot of the DJ stuff on there. They were literally just like, yeah, cool. We trust you. Like, we'll leave you 16 bars there and you do what you want. And if it doesn't work out, we'll just, you know. Yeah, we'll shrink yeah. it down and we'll figure something else out. So they were they were real cool with with like waiting for me to catch up. And you know, the whole break and privilege, you know, the whole scratch section and pardon me, mm-hmm. you know, there's the consequences. I mean, there's there's all kinds of things there that I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Just trust me. That's so cool. Do you remember working on privilege? And in general, what's your creative role in the writing process? Back then, it was more like I'm just adding the turntable parts. The structural parts came because I was like, hey, I want to do this here. And they were super cool. And they'd be like, okay, well, we'll just, we won't commit to this part. We'll just leave it here for you, mm-hmm. you know? And just literally, like, I just remember privilege being a beat for like mm-hmm. three and a half, four weeks. We'd be jamming it and playing it and cool. getting really good at playing it. And it was just a beat. Like Jose would just play and I'd be like, I'll, I'm going to get there. Just, just keep doing it, <laughs> you know? But really when I was, when we were doing make yourself, I was really playing catch up, you know, I'm in the rehearsal studio every day and the guys are playing over different parts and changing them every day and just getting better at playing them. Because like I said, when we went into the studio at that time, we were, we couldn't play the song any better. Mm-hmm. We were as best as we could. We got into the studio. We we did the parts and 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 you know that was it. There was no more. There's no more chance to make it better after that. So we went in knowing that we had to be able to play these songs as best as we could. So that particular record, I felt like I was playing catch up on like mm-hmm. the whole time. Interesting. Yeah, cool. well, and yeah. the guys are cool. They they were super cool. That it's a testament to how cool those guys are because. They literally just left the song empty, hmm. like you know, as as time as the clock's clicking ticking down, you know, they're just like, yeah, it's cool. We'll, we'll get it. Don't worry, we'll get, we got it. You got yours. You'll get whatever you want. Cool. And you know, that was my experience with them the first record, and I, you know, I was so thankful for that, you know. And it, it, it was, I saw it again when Ben came into the band and we wrote "Crow Left of the Murder." Hmm. They. They did that with Ben. They really let Ben have his wings and, and you know, let him just kind of like, That's okay, cool. this is what I'm used to. This is how I do it. And, you know, it's a learning process, obviously. But, I you know, I could see how we all interacted with Ben and we gave Ben the same kind of lead way and treatment as well. That's cool. That's actually really, that's that's awesome because, you know, you hear a lot of bands where like there's a lot of huge egos and certain people only want to be the ones writing and stuff like that, you know, so that's, that's actually really like, I I respect that about the band that like, it's, it's kind of like a family, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like I said, it's a rock band, you know, like, like Mikey and Brandon are going to be the key features Mm -hmm. in, in the band. And, you know, we know that, but at the same time, they're both trying to get the best out of everybody. Mm -hmm. So nothing's off the table. You know, and now writing music now in 2022, it's even more so. Everybody's kind of throwing stuff in the pile more, and it's it's really what's what kind of sticks now yeah. is kind of what's there. Yeah, we wrote that record in a place called Sound Arena out in the valley, hmm. on like Northridge and Reseda, and it was just your typical lockout spot. You know, mm-hmm. it was. There were bands on either side of you. There were no windows. It was dark. Mm. It was dirty, you know. And you walk. You'd, you'd walk out for a break, and we're in a valley. It would, you know, it'd be hundred degrees out. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. it's like oh, I'm going back inside. So it wasn't like 
it's, it was like all that energy was in that room alone. That mm-hmm. was it. It was like kind of going to work a little bit to write that record. But for me, per- personally, it was my first record, you know, that I got to write with these guys. So I was just, you know, I was a, I was all green. I was like, this is great. That's this awesome. is fun. Like, let's, do, let's just do this and just saying any wild idea that I had, you know, and I was just like, let's just go. Let's just do crazy stuff. So for me, it was really, really special. Obviously, it was the first record that I got to write with those guys. How long was the recording process for that record? I mean, I could tell you, I might be wrong, but I think we, I think we wrote for four weeks and then recorded for four weeks. Hmm. So I think it was two months total for that record. And, you know, I might, I might, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's how that went down. And then Morning View, uh, Morning View was next. We wrote that. We took the time and wrote that a little long. I think that was the whole process was three months. Mm. And then Crow Left of the Murder, we we wrote that pretty quick as well. Uh, I, you know, maybe two to three months on that, like from from starting on it to, to finished product. Yeah. So for that record, did you guys already have the songs written before going into the studio? Or did you do a lot of the songwriting in studio? We pretty much, when we went to the studio back then, we knew for the most part what we were doing and all the songs were pretty much written. We were like, time was like of the essence for us back then. So we would, you know, go in a rehearsal studio, uh, come up with a bunch of different ideas and then really bang them out and work on them. And then uh, find a, you know, a producer and go into the studio and record them. And it was just like, banging them out and you know we use it back then we came right off tour went right into the rehearsal studio right into the recording studio and then right back out on tour there was like no break at all so it was a pretty quick process and you know we're not one of those bands that wrote a lot of songs that we didn't put on the record Hmm. you know we we pretty much if there were if we needed 13 songs we wrote 13 songs we were pretty good at picking out which songs we think would be good and the other ones we kind of just skipped over them and just you know let them stay as loops or whatever for future use but but we usually never come back to any any of those you know they're just guitar riffs or you know cool drum beat or something like that that's cool man so i mean given the success of make yourself was there more pressure when it came to making the follow-up album morning view not on me personally um i think a little bit was coming from our record label uh they wanted us to write the record the same way we wrote make yourself mm. and we were just kind of like well we're all pretty responsible hard-working guys like i think we could do it cheaper and better if we were in a house mm. so mike was a guy that took that took the record label you know on on that one because mikey was already kind of in that world mm. and he was just like you know look we'll, we'll make you a cheaper record, a better record, if you let us get a house. And he convinced them to let us get a house. And that, by far, was the coolest experience we've had in writing a record. You know, at the same time, you know, we were young. We weren't really thinking about the future. There's not much pressure on you when you're just like, hey, we're just having fun doing what we're doing. Yeah. And we all knew that that we would get a record done. We all knew that it was the most important things in our lives at the time. So we weren't there just to fuck off. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we got a lot of inspiration and had a lot of fun in that house. It was such a, a bonding experience, you know, like, you know, like you go on work retreats and do the do the all the all the crazy stuff to get your group to be better. I think for us that even though we were already really tight and doing crazy things and nobody had, you know, not a lot of people get to do mm-hmm. that experience, you brought us even closer. So for the making of that record, you guys were all living together. When you're living together as a band, does it result in more creativity? Yeah, I don't know if there's, I think there's more inspiration. Mm -hmm. I don't know about more creativity. There's definitely, you know, having an idea at two in the morning and hearing Mike in the big room, like coming through, you know, playing a guitar. Like it was really easy just to walk out there and be like, Mike, like, check this out. What if you, what if we did this? And the two of us would be up at two in the morning, like just working, you know, just a little part out or something. And then, and then the next day when we all got together, we were like, yo, check this out. 
<laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. like there was no like, OK, we have the rehearsal room from two to four today or one to five or whatever. There was none of that. It was like 24 seven. If you had an idea, like all the equipment was up and running, you like you just do whatever you want to do. That's and so sick. Yeah. 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 So the inspiration was there. You know, the beach was there. There's it was, you know, Malibu. So it's all super nice. And I think that's what worried the record label. They were like, oh, these kids are just going to fuck off from Malibu. I'm not not, not giving yeah. us a record. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. So how did how did Mike end up convincing the label to give you guys the green light? Well, Mikey was always from a young age. He was interning at record labels and doing things like that. So he knew a lot of the people as they were getting promoted through mm -hmm. the record label. And Mikey's like our business guy of the band. He's he remembers everybody. He's always business minded with people. And you know, I don't know the exact conversation that he had, but somehow he convinced Sony to let us do it. <laughs> That's so sick. So when it comes to writing, is it usually one or two people that come up with the ideas in the band, or do you all contribute? I would say mostly, you know, it's a rock band, so it's mostly Mike. It's a guitar player. You know, if he, he's a crazy, crazy musician, first off, and he just writes stuff that you're just like, what is that? You know, <laughs> what is that? What are you like, okay, what's the timing of that? Where's the one of that? Like, what are you thinking? And, you know, and if Brandon vibes on it and likes it you know then you got two key pieces of of a song and then we all kind of just start banging it out and try to figure out you know okay let's change this change the key you know change the timing and we kind of all in that process but really you know mike mike has to come up with that guitar riff and brandon needs that melody if we don't have those then you know we just have an instrumental and you know it's, it's not a song really so so that's really the process, you know, it's sometimes, you know, now, you know, Ben Kenny's in the band, so he'll bring in a bunch of different things because he's a sick musician too. He's, mm -hmm. he's just, he's wild. He's probably the best musician in the band. <laughs> don't tell him I said that. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty uh, open format, but we also realize that we're in a rock band and it's guitars and vocals you know that's so cool so i mean yeah. for yourself personally considering you know you're in you're the dj you do turntables considering you're already kind of in the production world do you ever get involved with the actual producing of the music oh for sure for sure i think we all are uh i always said i'm like the icing on a multi-layer cake uh -huh. and so i'm like the you know when we're in the studio especially later in our career at bright music that's where most of my stuff happens you know it's me and the producer and whichever band member feels like coming along that day <laughs> you know but uh there's a lot of like you know afterthought to the songs to get them over the finish line mm -hmm. and that's at the very end of the process and it you know that's that i have a big part to do with that for sure you know there's there's a lot of there's a lot of ideas that i have in my head i'm like oh i think we could do this i'm like mm -hmm. brandon if you sing this melody this way I can put it on my turntables and do this to it, you know? Yeah, that's cool. And well, when I explain it to him, he's kind of like, uh, well, why don't I just sing it that way in the first place? <laughs> you know, he's kind of, he's not thinking from a DJ standpoint. So it's a little different. So to show him that, like, I actually, you know, have to like produce something and be like, okay, let's put this together. And like, let's think about this. And, you know, this can go here. And then three quarters through the song, we can reintroduce it and it, could sound this way you know yeah so yeah there's a lot of production but we're kind of all like that you know we're all pretty much involved in the production process when we write music we don't have a producer with it it's, it's just us for the most part and we, like i said before we're now we've done it so many times and so often that we kind of get a feel for what we like mm -hmm. and if we like it that's the first test you know it's got to pass that test obviously and then we'll get, you know, well, depending on our goal, we'll get a batch of songs. And then we'll kind of talk about producers and who we'd like to produce the song or help us out with the song. Because we always, if you leave the five of us up to our own devices, it's we'll, we'll be on left field. We need somebody <laughs> with an outside perspective to rein us in a little bit. That's cool, man. That's cool. So from, yeah. from Make Yourself onwards, Make Yourself was the first record that you were involved with with the band. Yeah. From that point onwards, has your approach in the studio 
changed at all or has it always been more or less the same? Oh, it's changed drastically, actually. And that's because of technology. Hmm. Um, when we wrote Make Yourself, uh, I was pressing up test pressings for scratch records. And, you know, hmm. I would always record weird sounds or just have a, just a, basically a whole library of sound effects and things like yeah. that. And I would have to press that up on a, to vinyl. So, you know, that, that was about a two week process to even get a test pressing and then another two week process to actually get real vinyl out of that. So, you know, during that process, the guys are writing music mm. and they're jamming and I'm just like trying to fill in things and like, okay, we can do this. But then technology caught up and everything went digital. You know, you got all the DVS DJ systems and everything was in the computer and and all of those sounds that I was thinking about in my head, oh, I can't wait to get this record back, were instant then. Mm. Like, I just put it in the computer, and it was right there on the vinyl. And so that was a huge change. And that happened, uh, like, around Crow Left of the Murder. Mm. So, and then I kind of went all digital. And when that happened, it it kind of opened up the all the keys for me. Yeah. Because, you know, before... I'm just making weird sound effects on the keys and recording them and then playing them on vinyl. And then because everything went instant, it kind of just was like, well, let me figure out how to do all this stuff live mm -hmm. and just skip the computer and go right to the keyboard as well. And then just add it as another tool in the shed, you know? Cool, yeah. That's so cool. yeah, it's definitely changed. Technology is crazy, man. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Like I, I still to this day, I'm like every day, I'm like, oh, I can learn this. I could this is new. Oh, this is new. This is new. It's like you always have to keep up with it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I get yeah. the argument because I have like I have some friends who are they're very pro analog, and I get the argument, but I just think that the yeah. benefits of digital just way outweighs the analog, in my opinion. I think digital is better yeah. personally. Yeah, I think so too. But then you know we have guys in the band that don't think that they think the opposite. You know, yeah. like like like. Which is great because there's, we have such a diversity in the band and it's never just one way. It's always like, okay, what is the best way for this situation? Because we use Pro Tools to record everything. Hmm. And in my home studio, like the only time I use Pro Tools is if I'm dealing with Incubus stuff. You know, I'm Ableton all the way just because I feel oh, okay, like cool. it's now surpassed Pro Tools in a way that, that Pro Tools can't catch up. Uh, especially if you're writing electronic music. Um, and, you know, forever we used to record the drums live in the Pro Tools and then run that back to tape, analog tape, just so we had that analog sound that we always used to have before, you know. And there's certain situations where we would still do that, you know. Obviously now it would be like a more boutique kind of thing. But, uh, you know, anything's on a table. There's great benefits of fully analog, mm. you know, but at the same time, you can't do the things you can do with digital. For sure. So, I mean, your, yeah. your, the early records, like Make Yourself a Morning View, were they mostly analog or were they digital? Oh, Make Yourself was all analog. Yeah. I mean, the only things, you know, only things digital were, you know, some keyboard sound effects or, you know, something like a, something like that. Even the turntables weren't digital back then. Right? <laughs> yeah, cool. which is which is crazy because on stage when you go to play that live, then you know Brandon's jumping around, going crazy. My needles are bouncing off the record, and every single day in a different venue, it was always about how could I get my needles not to skip. <laughs> you know, now I, that's not even an issue. I don't even have that problem anymore. That's cool, man. 